tonight. Amen. Let's all stand tonight. Let's put our hands together. Amen. We're going to worship God tonight. Sing it out. Most high, worthy.
Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to continue tonight. Let's put our hands together. We're going to sing it out unchanging. Great is your faithfulness. We're going to slow it down and worship God. Let's sing this song. Surrender. I'm giving you my heart. And I'm giving you my heart.
God, you're worthy to be magnified. Oh, Lord, you would move and pour out your glory, God. Manifest yourself, I pray tonight. God, you will abide. God, you will dwell, I pray, in the praises of your people, God. Lord, let no one leave this place in the same condition that they came in, but that they will be transformed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, you would move, I pray, throughout this week. Let this be a week, O oh God, of deliverance. God, you would move, I pray, in the gifts of the Spirit, of God of tongues and interpretation. Word of knowledge of prophecy, God. Lord, you would move. God, saturate this place with the anointing, God. That makes the difference. God. I would say to my people tonight, do not put limits on me. Do not limit the Holy One of Israel. Do not come to this place tonight knowing what you think is going to happen. Come in with frequency, notion about my spirit, my power. But know tonight that you serve an unlimited God. That I can do what I desire to do. That I can pray, that I can pour out my spirit as I choose to tonight. I would say to my people tonight, know that I desire to I desire to speak. I desire to show myself in a mighty way. And know that this week I shall move in my midst. You have been a faithful people unto me. You have called upon my name. You have looked unto me. And know this evening that I desire to move this week. I desire to pour out my spirit of fresh and visit you with fresh and sick. Hallelujah. God, we worship. And give you praise, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. Wonderful presence of God. We want to open up our service with prayer. We're praying for our churches there. We want to focus in on the islands of Chuk, that God will move even upon their services tonight. 
and they're lifting up the, this revival that God will move a, a breakthrough, God, that God will move in power, dominion, and authority, that the gifts will continue to be in operation. How many of you come this evening with a need upon your heart? You'll signify with an uplifted hand. We also want to pray for the anointing upon our pastors who will minister tonight. That God will move, give him the mind of Christ. And as we come before God, Brother Alan D is going to come and open us in a word of prayer. Let's lift up our voices tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you're God that answers prayer. There is nothing impossible, nothing difficult for you. You're able, God, to do above and beyond exceedingly abundantly all that we can ask God of you will move it God we thank you Lord God to come tonight uh, to gather in this place God to hear your word uh, I pray God a move of your spirit God let the Holy Ghost move in our midst Lord God Father move throughout this week God that you would touch us uh, God continue God to give us the mind of God I pray breakthroughs uh, in our lives, Lord God, we lift up even the islands, uh, God, that you would move uh, in the midst, God. Pour out your spirit, God. Uh, move in signs and wonders and miracles, God. Uh, Father God, I would continue to save souls. Uh, Father, we thank you, God. Uh, we need you this night once again. Anoint even the man of God uh, as he ministers tonight. Uh, give him wisdom and direction, God. We praise you and we're open. Uh, yeah. Open in our hearts, Lord God, would we'll receive from you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. Turn around, greet one another. Let's sing that song. I know it was the blood. And I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. bless you. You can take your seats. We want to welcome you to our Sunday evening service where God is moving in our midst. If you are here for the very first time, we especially welcome you on behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Cluck and his family and the staff here. We welcome you. You may have received a welcome pamphlet on your way in. There is a card inside. We ask that you fill that out and drop it in the offering basket in just a few moments. At this time, we have some announcements we'd like to show. Just one main announcement, we just started revival this morning and revival will continue on throughout tomorrow night through Thursday, uh, 7.30 every night. We encourage you to come early and pray, 6.30 the upper room will be open for prayer, come help us contend in prayer, we'll be joined by our area churches and then Monday through Friday morning prayer every single morning 6 a.m. for the early bird, 7 a.m. is our regular time to pray. That is all for the announcements. Praise God. We're going to take up the offering tonight. Let's have our ushers come. And I want to encourage you as we begin revival, we set the platform for what God wants to do this week. We've been praying, contending, but that also comes by our giving tonight. And I want to encourage everyone, let's give an offering that God would be pleased with tonight. Not that you haven't, but this is a new night, a different offering, a different revival meeting. So let's set the platform tonight. Let's give to the Lord. Let's have our brother uh, Rafa pray for the offering. Bless the offering. Amen. Let's give together as we sing that song. Bless that wonderful name. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name. Jesus, there's no other name. I bless that wonderful name. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There's no other name. 
have some special music tonight. Let's welcome them as they come. Check, check. I want to thank Pastor for this opportunity. We're going to do some rap for y'all tonight. DJ, if you could play that first track. Yeah, this message is about the truth. We're here to bring you the truth, whether you like it or not. Christ died upon the cross for your sin. And if you're living in sin, he's the answer. Let's go. It's Catalyst. We're here to bring the truth. Telling you about Jesus, just a few things we gonna do. Yeah, we will never quit, man, until this kingdom's built. Going forward and we still one of the shots that brings the message till we finish. It's the truth that we come up with. Come with. It's the one and only way, no relevance. Fact is, if you really think about it, Christ the risen king is your one and only hope. And there's no way around it. Christ is coming back, coming back like his brawn in the cast. Coming back fast like his dash, just a hundred mile dash. The truth he cannot pass, that there's something that he cannot ay, remain. Ay, yeah. get the she made. Smart turn, you say none of this is in the concern. Yeah. So turn away from sins and glisten you might burn. I yearn for my father be God and like a lantern. So learn, Jesus is the only way, so be firm. Yeah, we're living in a wicked and perverse generation. Heaven and hell, two places but one destination. Catalyst, yeah, we here to make a declaration Jesus is the king of kings of all of the nations yeah, as catalyst we here to bring the truth telling you about Jesus just to fit this we gonna do we will never quit man until we kill the bill going forward and we still one of the top sharing the message till we finish and we're not we're still rolling to the top chopping demons down man you know what I got yeah remember it's catalyst we don't lose got God okay. he knew where we were rising up no excuse and we Coming at you with the whole truth in case you forgot Jesus came and died for you upon that rugged, rugged cross. cross He showed us grace when we were full of sin and we, we were lost. lost Now we change and living blessed Call me Hugo, I'm the boss We keep it clean, living clean, deep like a summer breeze To be free, all, all you have to do is bend your knee I'm not Spielberg, cause you see we've come to take over the scene Catalyst is on the top and we will never stop until we're finished Like it's pretty in the past, Christ the King is coming back Rapid, furious and I'm fast, no Toretto, Terry Mag Nothing yeah, we speed the fast Keep your going, cut the slide Catalyst, we got etiquette My God is elegant Look at the score, that's a deficit Catalyst, we're here to bring the truth Telling you about Jesus Just a few things we gon' do Yeah, we will never quit Man, until we see the bill Going forward and we still One of the stop sharing the message Till we finish Catalyst, we're here to bring the truth Telling you about Jesus Just a few things we gon' do Yeah, we will never quit Man, until we see the bill Going forward and we still One of the stop sharing the message Till we finish Yeah, till we finish Praise God. This is going to be our first night of the revival. How many have come expecting God in this place, believing God's going to help us? Excellent ministry this morning. My very first time hearing Pastor Josh Lobato. Excellent ministry. We're in for a great week. Let's give him a warm welcome as he comes tonight to minister the Word of God. Praise God. How many love Jesus tonight? Amen. I can tell you I love church. I got out of church this morning, I went home and we turned on church, we turned on the music scene where the church I'm from, I can't get enough, man, I'm in, so, in a, a song service, I felt like busting a dance move and then I about lost it in the rap. Thank God for what he's doing, appreciate that, what God's doing, again, very grateful to be here with you this evening. If you have your Bibles, you can open to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. I remember going to Israel with Pastor Mitchell, and he just made this comment, and I'll, I'll never forget, but the greatest arena, the greatest battlefield is the mind. What's going on in our mind? I want to preach a sermon I've titled, What Are You mindful of. I want to tell you, my brother, that God's going to begin to challenge you, and he's going to challenge you in ways to be bold. I'll never forget, I was insecure. I'll never forget, I didn't want nobody. I, I didn't even want ministry. I didn't want anybody to look at me, and I was praying in the prayer room, God, if you're going to do what I feel you're calling me to do, God, you're going to have to change something in my heart, and I was driving home. I believe it was a, it was a Stacy Dillard revival, and he said, how many of you will obey the voice of God when he speaks to? And listen, I, I was hesitant to answer because I, 
I didn't want to invo- obey the voice of God sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And I was driving home that night, and here I am. I'm this chubby white boy. And I remember it was in the McDonald's parking lot, and there's all these cholos, you know, gangster cars, low riders. They had their music blasting. They had their cars bouncing. And God says, I want you to turn around and go witness to them. And I'm like, oh, no. But I just lifted my hand. It's almost in my heart. I'm like, dang it. (laughs) Right? And I remember I begin to go and I I show up and I said, you know, excuse me. And they're all looking, you know, like looking at me like, what the heck is this guy doing? I'm in a suit and in a tie. And something came over me. I begin to preach. I begin to declare the goodness of God. And I'll tell you, I I don't know what happened to them, but I know what happened to me. God was doing something because I was obeying his voice. God is going to speak to you. God is going to deal with you in times where your palms are sweaty. And you're like, no, no. But if you will obey the voice of God, there's a boldness that God wants to give you for his kingdom. Obey his voice. Give God praise. Thank God. Thank God. My brother, God wants you to pray big and specific. God spoke to me in the prayer room. Big and specific, and God is hearing your prayers, and he's going to answer you in a powerful way. Give God praise. Thank God. Thank God. I was so blessed to see you come walking in. The kingdom of God needs people like you. And there are people that are directly connected to you that if you will obey his voice and you will be a witness to God, God will use your influence for his kingdom, and you will fill rows with people because of your voice, because of what God's doing in your life. Let your testimony declare it, speak it. There's influence that God wants to give you. And God wants to do a great thing for, not just for you, but for other people. And there's going to be people that give save and give their life to Jesus because you lifted your voice. Thank God for that. Amen. (laughs) What are you mindful of? The idea is your mind is filled with something. And the text that we're going to read is such a powerful idea. It is such a powerful understanding of what happens in our mind. I can say, what are you mindful of? Another question that I can ask you this evening is, when you talk to yourself, what do you say? Come on, don't look at me like that. You all talk to yourself. (laughs) What do you say when you talk to yourself? And I'm not talking the small things like, oh, Josh, you forgot, or or, why did you? But I'm talking about this ongoing self-talk, this conversation that is in your mind. And I have seen people get stuck in a negative cycle. You begin to think that things are not helpful, but they're harmful. We had a delay on our airplane, and you're sitting on the airplane, and there's a delay. You're not thinking, oh, praise God, they're making sure everything's okay to fly. You're thinking, man, these idiots can't get anything together. (laughs) In the morning, you say, I have so much to do today. And then in the night, you say, I didn't do nothing today. You begin to think about money and your ideas. It's always going to be a struggle. It's always going to be. You think about relationships and, and I can't trust people anymore. If you do something wrong, you have this blanket state and I'm just a mess up. And this negative cycle, it goes on and on and on. And again, I ask you this evening when you talk to yourself What do you say? And what I declare to you this evening is what you say to yourself. It matters more than you can imagine. This ongoing self-talk. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. The Good News Translation, the Bible says, be careful how you think. One scripture tonight. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped. By your thoughts. 
Why should we be careful? Because the Bible says that our entire life is shaped by how we think. You best be careful because how you think is beginning to shape and form your life. What you think is shaping who you are. The scientific explanation is what you think impacts what you believe. And this impacts how you feel, ultimately impacting everything that you do. And the idea of this scripture, that your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. And the Bible so powerfully is telling us, be careful, be careful, be careful. Because no one is more influential in your life than you are. Because nobody talks to you as much as you do. And I like that. But what I don't like, sadly, as a pastor, I have seen people, they're talking themselves into a hole. They're talking themselves into a life that they absolutely do not like. And I propose the question to you again this evening. What are you mindful of? My prayer this evening, even this afternoon, is God help us to be more impacted by the gospel and the renewing of our mind and what is going on up here, upstairs, through the word of God and what God is speaking versus the negative cycle of this world. How many believe that our world is becoming more and more negative? Let me see your hand. Come on, be honest. Our world is becoming more and more negative. People literally becoming chronically negative. And we see people having emotional. We see people having mental breakdowns. And the idea is it's when their brain can't handle no more. And it backfires. And I wish this was a practical problem that we could just... You know, throw some medicine at or throw an idea at. But I can tell you this evening, it's a spiritual problem at its root. And I hope to leave you tonight with this understanding that your thoughts have incredible power. And that the good news tonight is that we have because of Jesus, we have because of God's throne, incredible power over what we think. Let me tell you by the power of God this evening, you can choose what you are mindful of. The Bible says in Romans 8, Verse 5, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those that live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, for to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritual minded, this is what we all want for our marriages and our families, for our ministry, for our church. And that is the hope of life and peace. The Bible says when it says flesh, it's not specifically talking about our body, but this is our sinful desires or what we set our mind on. Romans 8, 6, the message version, so cool. To be controlled by human nature, it results in death. To be controlled by the Spirit results in life and peace. If you find yourself hurting, If you find yourself broken, you find yourself discouraged or negative, it can be that your mind is set upon the things of this world instead of the things of God where you will find life and peace if you change. Please let me help you show you today when negativity is dominating the mind. It is hurting you. It is hurting the family. It is hurting your relationships, your church, and Lord have mercy, it's hurting your pastor. (laughs) Why is negativity so poisonous? At its root, we have what you call a negative bias. We are biased to that which is negative. This is our human nature. 
the negativity, the events in life, it imprints on our brain more quickly and it stays longer than positive ones. Something bad. Something negative, something unfortunate, it hits our mind. And it's like it's instantly glued to our mind. We have a negative bias. Let me prove it to you on social media, on the news, whatever it is. What news spreads faster, good news or bad news? (laughs) Did you hear And it begins to spread very quickly. The stories on social media or on the news, listen, when they're negative, when they're bad, the review, the views, it just goes higher and higher. I can tell you, Pastor Jesse and Pastor Dion and Pastor Rod, they can help me out on this one. I was just telling them today that you preach a good sermon. Man, you feel the Holy Ghost, people get healed, powerful things happen, and people after church, pastor, that was powerful. Pastor, that was amazing. I'm so encouraged, I'm changed. And, And one person after another, they give you a good report. And then you have Captain Well comes up and says, pastor, that was good, but well... And listen, I'm driving home after a victorious service of people saved, healed, and delivered. And let me ask you, what do you think I'm thinking about? The ten powerful testimonies or Captain Well? (laughs) You know how it is. And I know myself. It's our human nature to begin to focus on the one negative comment that someone said or the one negative com- a look that someone gave us. And I'm preaching this tonight because I have seen people in constant negativity and it throws them into a cycle And they call it a flight or fight. And God has designed our brain this way. That in this kind of situation, we would be ready to either fight our way out or take off running. Our brain begins to release cortisol. And this helps us. It helps us to become more alert and focused and ready to take care of whatever the issue is. But there are people, their brain is in overtime producing cortisol. They're always in a negative cycle. Always feel something's wrong. Think about what our scripture says. Our scripture says that a mind that is governed by the flesh, it begins to produce death. Whether you know God or not, listen, he knows us. And a long time ago, he already gave us this answer. And as you put your mind on the things of God, it will bring life and peace. And I'm preaching this in church because we have to be careful. Monday's coming. I can tell I didn't encourage too many people. Monday's coming. And we're surrounded. What's on the news is negative. What our friends talk about is negative. Our customers talk negativity. What I did is I knew I was going to preach this sermon in my, in my church. And so I... I wrote it on a Thursday and I said, you know what, I'm going to give Friday and Saturday, wherever I go, what I do, I'm just going to kind of eavesdrop on the conversation of people. And listen, I'm by myself like a weirdo, just start laughing because people are so negative. Like, my goodness, what is going on? When you focus on the negative, you begin to create more negative, literally, neural pathways, and it makes it easier to see, easy to express negativity. Once you think a thought one time, it's easier to think it again. Whatever you do once, it's easier to do again. This is why they say practice. 
makes perfect, but we should not. And we are not supposed to be practicing negativity. When you focus on the negative, you think about more negative, and then you hang around negative, and you're surrounded by criticism, and you never think the best, always thinking the worst. Tonight, God wants to set us free. Those negative neural pathways. Amen. There's a spiritual bulldozer available by the Holy Ghost tonight. Become highways. And they become freeways, literally. Negativity becomes a habit. And your negative thoughts are default. When in doubt, think more doubt. Life is going to get worse. You can't trust anybody. Everybody's going to let you down. All Christians are like this. Life stinks. My dog ate my homework not once but five times today. I'm never going to be happy. I'm never going to get there. My ministry, my life, my marriage, my, and it goes on and on and on. And there's never ever going to be really in anything in life that matters. I'm stuck. And negativity becomes default. And it becomes a habit in life. Think about this. That the mind which is governed by the flesh produces death. This is God's words. The music you listen to, the clips that you're swiping on, the shows that you crave, it all creates this mental highway that begins to direct your life. And I'm asking you to listen to me today because your thoughts have incredible power. The good news This evening is again, I say you have incredible power over the thoughts and where you allow them to take you. How many know we're all vulnerable to some form of negativity? Every person here tonight, they say there is four areas of negativity. Number one is relational cynicism. This is a general distrust of people and their motives. You can't trust people. They're going to take advantage of me. Everyone is out for themselves. All people are this way. No matter what you say. Nobody's really generous. Nobody's really benevolent. You can't really trust. And you know what's amazing is what you usually think about other people is usually what you think about yourself. That when you were questioning the motives of others, that means often you don't like the motives that you have. And there are some here, it's relational cynicism, and this is where you're vulnerable. Number two is negative filtering. This is a, a, a superpower can always find what is wrong. You look at what is good and can always find the bad. You assume the worst possible outcome. You get an air bubble in your stomach. You start checking your pulse. You start feeling, my my lungs are tight. My heart... Mama, someone help me. And, oh, okay. Woo. Amen. Looking for what is wrong instead of what is right. You text a friend and they don't respond within 30 minutes because they're in a powerful witnessing conversation and you're ready to blow up the world. This is just for somebody out there, nobody in the church. I know how it is. Heck no, people aren't like that. I know. (laughs) Looking for what is wrong instead of what is right. 
Number three is absolute thinking. This is black and white thoughts. One man hurts you, all men are bad. One woman hurts you, all women are bad. If you have a disagreement with somebody, then you just completely write them, oh, they're never talking to me again. They'll never talk to me. They'll never talk. And before you know it, you're isolated. Absolute thinking. And I'm telling you tonight, this is happening more and more in our world. One problem. They did wrong, and I am right. And there are people that's so like this, they can't even see it. Many people can be just flat out mean and rude. Again, no one in the church is talking about out, way out there. Then blaming. This is believing. Yourself to always be the victim. If you find yourself jealous, critical, discontent, assuming the worst, negative towards other people, I want to tell you God has a plan tonight. God wants to do a miracle, so the question is before us, can I change? Can I go from a negative mind to a mind that God says would produce life, would produce peace? There's something that can change in my marriage. There's something that can change in my ministry. There's something that can change in the circle of friends that I have. That I can bring life and peace and joy on the fruits of the Holy Ghost. Can someone change? A mind that is full of faith. This is a mind that begins to reflect the heart and the character of God. And I declare to you tonight, of course you can change. Of course God can do a miracle. But listen, it's not always easy. That's just being practical and it's not being, being negative. <laughs> they did a medical study. And what they did is they took two different groups of people. And in these two different groups of people, they gave them the same information, the same medical procedure, but in two different descriptions. In one group, they said, you know what? There is a 70% chance of success. It's great. It's wonderful. The other group says, you know what? There's a 30% chance of failure. The 70% people that said, hey, there's a 70% chance that it's going to go great. They all said, hey, it's good. I'm doing it. The 30% of failure, this is what they heard. And immediately all of them said, oh, heck no. That's, it's bad. No way. No way. And they begin to think, hey, can, can we change their mind from Thinking it's bad or thinking it's good to the other side. So they go back to the 70%. And they said, hey, it's 70% chance of success. But there's a 30% chance of failure. Listen, I'm no Elon Musk, but it's the same thing. And immediately these people, oh no, 30% chance of failure? And they said, no, it's bad. And then trying to get the 30% that said, no, it's bad, to the 70%. They said, 70% chance. It'll work. It'll work. It'll work. And not a single one of them would change from bad to good. And the reason why I'm telling you tonight, listen, you can change. And God, with, all, with God, all things are possible. But I'm telling you, we need a miracle. That the Spirit of God can help you. The Spirit of God can deal with you and do a miracle. What Proverbs tells us is that your thoughts guide your life. 
that your thoughts can shape and form how you think about your marriage, how you think about your wife, or how you think about your husband. Listen, it begins to shape. It produces an outcome. Your thoughts have more power than you think they do. Well, how do I practically change? Thank you for asking. I'll let you know. We can look at a Bible character. And it's possible to get such a powerful picture. In the life of David, it was a bad day. This is what is going on in this scripture. It is the worst day that you can possibly imagine. I can tell you right now, I don't know how bad your week or bad your month or bad your day has been, but it's nothing compared to what's going on in the life of David. David comes home from battle and he begins to see that the enemy has come and burnt down their homes and destroyed their economy, destroyed the place that they call home. And that is not the worst, but even their wives and their children were taken into captivity. Who knows what these men are doing to them? Who knows what's going on? And just when it couldn't get even any worse for David, his own army, they begin to declare in Samuel 30 verse 3, when David and his men, they reached Ziglag, they found it destroyed by fire, their wives, their sons, their daughters, taken into captivity. David begins to weep aloud. David's men begin to weep aloud until they had no strength left to weep. And I'm asking, or I'm telling you tonight, maybe you're hurting, but listen, let God do a miracle. You can have pain and disappointment. There can be some deferred hope in your life. Then it gets even worse. 1 Samuel, the, the sixth verse. David was greatly distressed because the men began to talk about stoning him. Each one was bitter in their spirit. And I love how this verse ends. The Bible says, but David found strength in the Lord his God at the worst moment of his life. David found strength in God. Here he is at the worst possible moment. He's buried in problems. He's buried in negativities. He's buried. He's surrounded by conflict. Some of you tonight need to find some strength in God. Not by your own might, your own power of positive thinking, the strength of self-will, but listen by the Spirit of God that can touch you, that can heal you, that can erase your past, that can set you free from those words and those descriptions and those definitions that somebody else has put upon your life. The Bible says those that are spiritually minded have this wonderful thing called life and peace. It's powerful. The Bible says David, he got up, encouraged himself in the Lord. You know, in church, there are people that have a mind full of negative. The neural links are highways to see, to notice, to express what is wrong, to express what is negative. But listen, we need to learn to encourage ourselves in God. And I'm thinking like David encouraged himself in the Lord. Like what did he do? What did he say? And the answer is we don't know. <laughs> But we do know what he said other times. And it's very likely that he began to speak the same thing. Listen to Psalms 103. And I'll give you a little bit of homework. Read the whole chapter. It's powerful. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will not forget his benefits. 
who forgives all your sins and will heal all of your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who will satisfy your desires with good things so your youth is renewed like eagles. And he begins to speak this. He begins to say, he begins to encourage himself in the Lord. So powerful. And what is so powerful that when David was going through the worst time in his life, listen, God began to change it, that God gets the glory, that God got him through, that God can do a miracle in your mind, in your home, in your This is the God that we serve. Romans 15 verse 13, the Bible says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow. The key word is overflow. Overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is my prayer this evening. Those negative highways, these negative ways of thinking that is beginning to shape our life and shape the atmosphere of our home and shape our marriage and shape the future of our finances can even shape the outcome of our ministry that Jesus can touch you, that Jesus can set you free and those negative neural highways can be destroyed by the power of God. But you must allow your mind to be renewed by the word of God. That God, I'm going to make a decision that I'm going to be intentional to keep my mind on spiritual things. I'm going to begin to read my Bible. I'm going to begin to pray. I'm going to begin to fill my mind with life. Begin to fill it with faith and hope. You know, we can fast from negativity. Break free from the negative YouTube rabbit holes. Those things get deep. That friend that feeds your negative appetite. And I'm just declaring to you this evening that your thoughts have power. And we can make a decision as the people of God. That God, you can give me power over these thoughts. You can give me power over this culture that is so quickly becoming negative. And I can begin to speak faith. I can begin to speak hope. I can begin to speak peace. I can begin to speak revival. How many believe God, the song that we are singing, that there's going to be a great revival? And that is what the gospel is, is that we will speak Jesus. And it is the good news to the island of Guam. Can you say amen? It is good news to the place called China. It's good news to Henderson and to Las Vegas and to Singapore that we're sending the gospel. It's good news. Thank God. Our scripture one more time. As he's so powerfully speaking into our lives, be careful how you think. Be careful. Be careful. Tomorrow morning when you wake up with that same Monday thought, be careful how you think. For your life is shaped by your thoughts. Amen. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Thank you for your time. This evening, you came and you're not right with God. You've never made a decision to put your faith in Christ. You've never made an honest statement saying, God, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. But the Spirit of God, God is touching you tonight. 
through the power of his word. The spirit of God is pulling you unto salvation. He's pulling you, drawing you. You would say, Pastor Josh, I need prayer. I've never given my life to Jesus. I've never put my faith. But God is dealing with me. Listen to me. The Bible says that we were all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And I'm preaching to myself. But the difference is I found myself one day as a young man saying, God, I need you. God, forgive me. The life of what the Bible declares life and peace and hope. It's not just some distant false reality, but it can be yours tonight. The sin doesn't have to destroy. And see, I want to give my life to Jesus tonight. I feel God drawing me unto himself. That's you. I want you to lift up your hand right now, right where you are. You're not right with God. I see your hand. God bless you. You could put it down. Anybody else? You're not right with God. I see your hand, my brother. Thank you for that. Anybody else tonight? The Spirit of God right now is drawing you, is speaking to you, is touching you. And you would say, that's me. I want to give my life to Christ. I'm going to admit that I'm a sinner. This is me. I want you to lift up your hand. God bless you. I see your hand. Who else? You're visiting tonight. God bless you. You guys can put your hands down. You've never been saved. You've never been. Maybe you know all about God. But you don't know Him. A true relationship with Jesus. And before we move on, you would say, that's me. I want to give my life to Christ. Here's my hand. Here's my honest heart. Lift it up right where you are. Lift it up. Lift it up. I see your hand. God bless you. Anybody else? Join these honest hearts. Praise God. Maybe at one time you were right with God. At one time you were saved. At one time you know what life, you know what peace is. You know the hope that God brings. And it's this very thing. In church, and the enemy is constantly assaulting our mind. The arena of our mind is a battlefield. And we can be quickly filled with negativity and people and problems and situations and and the next thing you know we wake up and we're not even right with God we're backslidden but listen we serve a graceful God God is so good and you're here tonight and his spirit is speaking to you his spirit is dealing with you come back home rededicate your life I still have a plan. I still love you. You're still welcome. And you want to rededicate your life to Jesus tonight. That's you. I want you to lift up your hand. God's dealing with you right now. I see your hand. God bless you. I see your hand. God bless you. Who else? I feel a wonderful presence of God right now. God is speaking right to your heart. And you would say, that's me. That's me. I'm going to rededicate my life to Jesus tonight. And I'm not looking back. Lift up your hand right where you are. Make that choice. Make that decision. And God's going to honor it by his grace. God's going to honor it by his mercy. Lift up your hand. We want to pray. Amen. All those that lifted up their hands, I want you to look at me. Amen. You lifted up your hand. I want you to look at me. Over here, you lifted up your hand. You want to give your life to Jesus. Amen. Back here in the back, you guys want to give your life to Jesus. Amen. I want you to stand to your feet right where you are. You lifted up your hand. Right where you are, stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want you all to come forward right now. God's going to help you. Amen. I need some altar workers to come. Amen. To minister with these people. Young men, you guys got to pray with these young guys. Thank you. God bless you, my brother. Praise God. God bless you. God's going to help you. Thank God. Lead them through a sinner's prayer. Church, I'm declaring to you tonight, this is a a wonderful, wonderful warning. And it's just simply saying, be careful how you think. 
Listen, life happens. It rains on the just, it rains on the unjust. Things happen. But be careful where we allow our mind to go. Because what we begin to think and what we begin to give our minds to and fill our minds with, it begins to shape and form our lives. People in ministry, listen, you need to fill your mind with faith. Fill your mind with hope. Every outreach leader, God's going to do a miracle. And you begin to voice this. You begin to speak by faith that we serve a big God. You begin to speak about your unsafe family members. You begin to speak to the impossible. The Bible says that you can say to a mountain, move, and it will move. And that comes by someone that is filling their mind with faith and hope and things that are worthy, things that are pure, things that truly matter. And let God help you tonight. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. These altars are open. I encourage you to come find a place to pray. Christian, if there's one next to you, you don't know if they're right with Jesus, I encourage you to turn to them and invite them to pray with you. Encourage them to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And let's get a hold of God as we sing this song. Sing this song and worship to God. in an atmosphere like this God can do a powerful miracle
Let him break down these walls that have been formed over years and years. People that can remember back when they're child, and man, I was just so naive and joy and peace, but life and, and negativities and these thoughts, and, and it has, it shaped, and listen to me, Jesus can set you free. It's what he's doing right now. Feel God touching people. The atmosphere of your marriage, the atmosphere of your home and your family because of the decisions that you are. Listen, we pray real prayers at the altar. Pray them, God, I need you. And by the power of God, it's going to be different. I want you to pray this prayer. You're serious about God doing a miracle in your life. I'm telling you, we pray, but you got to go and make an intentional decision. God, it's what the Bible says. You have to allow daily your mind to be renewed. To be transformed for how you used to think and who you used to be. I want you to say, dear Lord Jesus, I make a decision right now. That I have been negative. And I repent. God, renew my mind. Help me. Fill me with life and peace. The promises of the Bible. Deliver me, oh God. And I will find strength in you. And my life will be shaped and formed. Transformed by your word. By your will. God, by your way. And I thank you for deliverance. I thank you for changing me. In the name of Jesus, set me free. The blood of Jesus on my mind sets me free and makes me whole. And I declare this tonight, that I am set free and I am different by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Give God praise and glory. <laughs> deliver me, Lord. Oh, deliver me. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, my God. And then we can stand to our feet in the presence of God. Thank God for what he wants to do. Sister, God put you upon my heart that he wants to do a new thing with peace and joy. But you've been through some things. There's been some words spoken, some difficulties. And God wants to turn. He works everything to the good for those that love God. And if you will give those things to God, if you will give those things to God, the Bible says he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. You can trust God with all your heart, with everything. And if you'll make a decision, God, this is what I've gone through. God, this is the names. And I choose to let go. I choose to be delivered. There's a powerful miracle of joy and peace and happiness to the place where you come into the kingdom of God. And you're feeling the presence of God because you're free. You understand what I'm saying? If you'll give it to God. Allow God to do a great miracle in that area. We've all been through some things. But when we choose to give it to God, he makes all the difference. Can I pray for you? God, I pray that you would touch my sister right now. By the Holy Ghost. Devil, you have no right. We thank you. We give you praise. Amen. Give it to God and watch what he'll do. Thank God. Give God praise. Thank God. Thank God. Sis, you're not forgotten. God has a powerful plan. You're not forgotten. It's perfect. It's wonderful. You fix your eyes on him. Fix your eyes on him. 
And those thoughts and those ideas that come in sometimes, you rebuke, and absolutely not. I'm a woman of God. I'm a child of God. And listen to me. God has a wonderful plan and destiny for your life. Thank God. Thank God. We serve a wonderful God, don't we? Feel a wonderful presence of God. God does it for other people, but can he do it for me? God says God wants to use you. God does it for other people. God, can you do it for me? God says, yes, I can. You continue to be faithful. Continue to have an open heart. Continue to pursue. Continue to stand behind and push with all your heart. God sees and God's going to honor you. God sees and God's going to honor you. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. There are people tonight, listen, God delivered you. I'm telling you, God delivered you. Even this song. I've never sang this song before. I've never even heard it. Deliver me, deliver me, oh God. And I was singing, God speaking. Listen, God has delivered you. Do not go back. Those negative cycles are going to hit you. You're going to walk out those doors and the war is on, isn't it? But God, I'm delivered. God, I'm set free. What you learn while you wait is always more important than what you're waiting for many times. And in the wait, right, Samson, he was... He was powerful on the battlefield, but it was the in-between. And this is what David did in the in-between. You begin to look at his life, and he's practicing his sling. We know that he was practicing the harp and instrument. He, he was practicing what God was ultimately going to use him for. And in those in-between times, God speaks to you, begin to put things in place. Yeah, God, I'm waiting, and sometimes it gets a little frustrating. I've been there, I've been done that. But in these in-between times, allow God to be glorified. And when you step out and, whoa, what happened to him? What's going on? Because in the secret and in the quiet place, God, I'm devoting myself to you. And the battle's real, isn't it? Right? It's raging. But God, I'm seeking you in the secret, in the quiet, in the in-between. And God's going to use you in a powerful way. Give God praise. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. God wants to bring breakthrough in your life, man. I don't know what area it is. It's just God. I, something, something's got to change. Right? The struggle, the contend, and it's almost like, you know, the enemy wants to take the contend out of the contender, right? We're, we're, we're fighting, but we're not swinging as hard. Right? We're praying, but God wants to give you breakthrough. And that song that we sing, Renew My Spirit, O oh God, this is a song that David, and you begin to, God, renew me. God, I'm going to fight another day. I'm going to be a bulldog for Jesus where you can grab on, you can still breathe and never let go. You know that? God's going to bring breakthrough. God has seen you. And God wants to do a great thing. God, I pray, touch my brother right now by the Holy Ghost. That's God touching you right now. God, I pray, minister by the Holy Ghost, Lord. God, we give you praise. God, we give you glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. Thank God. Thank God. Man, I love being in the presence of God. I could be here all night. I'm dead serious. And I want to encourage you. Listen, we said it this morning, make a space. And in our minds, we're going to make a space for the impossible. The prophecy during service, so powerful. Listen, can't we limit God in our minds sometimes? Say amen. You know it's true. <laughs> I'm a preacher and I'm guilty. We can limit God. And listen, God, I'm going to remove the limitations in my mind. I'm going to be a fireball for Jesus in my family. 
And I'm telling you, God can do incredible things. I want revival. There's going to be a great revival in this land. I was claiming it up here. God, I want to be a part. And that's what God wants to do. Don't allow our minds, the arena of our mind, that God can do powerful things and use you and equip you and inspire you and breathe upon you. Don't give it to hell. Don't give it to the culture of this world. How many believe God got great plans? Amen. How many believe tomorrow, Monday, is going to be a great Monday? Amen. How many believe this week people are going to get saved and delivered? Amen. How many will go out and tell somebody about Jesus tomorrow? Amen. God, you're going to touch somebody, and God, you're going to use me to do it. And we're going to see great things this week. God, I'm making a space. God, it's going to start with my mind. I'm going to put faith and hope in what you want to do in my life and through my life. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Let's worship God. Amen. Give God praise as pastor comes today. Let's go ahead and sing that song. When I think about the Lord, is that the song? Let's sing it through. So when I think about the Lord, how we say With the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up and turned me around, how He placed my feet on solid ground, makes me want to shout. tonight and thank him for all that he's done in this service all that he has done today Oh, it or a bossy, it or a bash, and or a boy, it or a bye. Praise God. We'll be back here tomorrow night. We begin at 7 30. That is Monday through Thursday night, 6 30 is prayer. Bring someone with you. Take some flyers if there's any left. Bring someone. Let's believe God to move in the supernatural, healing, deliverance, for God to manifest His power. We're going to have a great time. Our area wide churches will be coming as well from Agate. Uh, you name it, Manilao, Tamunin, they'll all be here, so we're going to have a great time believing God to help us. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Let's have, let's see our brother Pete Nalta closes in prayer. Amen. God bless you.